This is the ham filter, a device based on Arduino and completely inspired by Microsoft's Surface Dial. An external dial controller like this can be really useful for doing things like zooming in and out when editing an image or a PCB. Launching your favorite apps with a single tap or just as a plain old media controller. With five mappable inputs, single tap, double tap, short press, long press, and the knob, programmable LEDs and vibration feedback. The Hamsville dial makes a very versatile controller. I designed the dial around two factors, intuitive use and durability. For the knob, I wanted a contactless rotation, so I couldn't just toss in a potentiometer or a rotary encoder. Instead, I devised a magnetic rotary detection solution. Aside its contacts with the bearing, the knob is completely isolated. It communicates its rotation to the circuit with the tiny alternating magnets glued to it. I already made a separate video where I explained in detail the logic behind the setup. I also explained how I was able to detect multiple capacitive touch inputs reliably on the Arduino. So to get a better understanding of how the dial's inputs work, please watch the video. The LEDs are the traditional addressable LEDs. They are attached to the base close to this transparent piece. This allows the LEDs to shine in a subtle way around the base of the dial. A haptic motor is also installed on the base. This gives the dial vibration feedback that pairs nicely with the knob's rotation and the capacitive touch inputs. The brain behind all of this is the Arduino Pro Micro. The board features the Hatmega 32U4. This chip can be used to replicate keyboard and mouse controls. So I figured by mapping the dial's inputs to different keyboard shortcuts, I can control different things on my PC with it. Essentially, the dial is able to control any function that has a keyboard or a mouse shortcut associated with it. And even if the function doesn't have a shortcut, there are many ways to assign one to it. Here's the full schematic. As you can see, it's not a complicated one. I'll have a link to it in the description. There are four parts to be printed. They are small parts, so they don't take long to print. The light diffuser should be printed with transparent or translucent filament to allow the light from the LEDs shine through. The electronics of the dial includes an Arduino Pro Micro board, the Hamsville dial kit. I had a couple of this made from JLC PCB, and I have to say, this math black PCB is a fire. You can get them from my tin desktop. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Addressable LED strip, a USB cable. This you can get from an old USB mouse or keyboard. A 6906 bearing. Now this is a 3D printed bearing. And in case you're wondering why I feel comfortable using a 3D printed bearing in this project, please watch this video. It's also a standard size bearing, so you can just buy it if you want the absolute best. Also required are tiny wires, some rubber pads, and 6M2 screws. I'll have a link to all the parts in the description. Putting the dial together is pretty simple, but it does follow a specific order. The first thing to do is solder some wires to the LED strip and attach it to the base of the dial. Next up is the bearing. The 
haptic motor comes with short wires, so an extension is needed. After installing the haptic motor, the bolt holder can be attached and secured with three screws. Up next is attaching the dial board, but not before solving some headers to it. The header pin should then be trimmed down to allow the board to snap properly into the board holder. Once the dial board is attached, the wire from the LED and the haptic motor can be shortened and soldered to the board. The board has labels on it that indicates what wire should be connected where. The green wire is connected to CT pad on the board and will later be soldered to the capacitive touch pad. Up next is attaching the USB cable. The wires from the USB needs to be soldered to the Arduino board in the proper order, otherwise the PC will not recognize it when it's connected. Once that's done, the Arduino board can then be attached and soldered on to the dial board. The capacitive touch pad can now be connected and glued onto the top. Before the knob can be attached, you need to first glue on the magnets. The magnets must be glued on with alternating poles next to each other, otherwise the rotation detection will get mugged up. I find it's best to glue on one pole first, and then glue on the other pole to the holes left in between. Once the magnets are glued in place, the knob and the electronics can then be connected and screwed in place. All that's left is attaching the LED diffuser 
gluing out the rubber parts and laying down the USB cable in the slot on the base. To be able to control the dial, all the necessary libraries must first be installed. I'll link to the GitHub repository for all associated libraries in the description. All you need to do is clone the libraries as zip files and install them in the Arduino IDE. Once you have all five libraries installed, connect the dial to your PC. And on that board, make sure to select Arduino Leonardo. and check to see that the board is detected. If you then go under Examples, Amsville Dial, you should see the examples included with the library. The first sketch you want to upload is the basic test sketch. Once the sketch is uploaded, the dial should vibrate and the LEDs should come on after. <laughs> If you then open the serial monitor and turn the knob, you should see a number counting relative to the knob's rotation. You should also test all the capacitive touch inputs. That single tap double tap, short press, and long press. If everything works, which it should if you've put the dial together correctly, you can proceed to uploading the font sketches. The second example, in-app controls, lets you control certain aspects of a particular application with the dial. This example is configured to work with Chrome, so I can do things like Switch between tabs by turning the knob. Refresh a page with a single tap. And do a quick search by double tapping. The third example lets you quick launch specific apps with the dial's touch inputs. For example, I can maybe set VLC player to launch with a single tap and notepad with a double tap. The fourth example is one of my favorite. This sets up the dial as a media controller for your PC. So you can do things like pause and play songs with a single tap. Control the system volume by turning the knob. And skip songs with a short press, followed by turning the knob. You'll also notice that the LED animation changes to match the active dial operation. The fifth example sets up the dial as a key to log into your PC. So instead of typing out a password, you can just select a predefined color and the dial will log in for you. You can argue that typing your password is quicker, but I bet it's not as cool as logging into your PC with a color. The final example is much more complicated compared to the others. What I've done here is combine all those little functionalities into one interconnected sketch. So instead of having the dial control just one application, I've set it up to control multiple apps by assigning them different colors. So by switching the current color on the dial, 
I can switch the controls from one app to the other. For example, say I want to use the dial in Chrome. Since I've already mapped it to the color orange, I just have to switch the dial to orange. Say I am now in Premiere Pro. I already mapped it to the color purple, so I just have to switch the color again. The dial also keeps track of how long it's idle for. So when it's not being used with a specific app, it has idle mode. In this mode, the dial will default to functioning as a media controller. Other things like launching applications and logging into your PC with a predefined color are also baked into the sketch. These are just some of the ways I've chosen to use the dial. I'm sure you guys have your own ideas on how and what you would like to use it for. So please feel free to write and share your own custom sketches. So there you have it, a simple but really useful tool for everyone. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to the channel to see more awesome projects like this. Catch you guys in the next one.